everyone, I'm Oscar Gomez and I'm back to my workshop to show you this Roscon de Reyes recipe that has been in my family for centuries and has been transmitted from generation to generation, but actually not. This is a recipe that I have developed to use a sourdough starter with a lot of butter and that is producing in a very delicate, long fermentation, full of flavor, incredible texture on the crumb uh, Roscon de Reyes. Uh, I fully recommend that you that you try it. So you've heard sourdough and you might be tempted to leave this video. I would say not because the good news I have is that we can transform easily sourdough recipes into yeasted recipes and vice versa. So in this video I'm going to try to show you at the same time, uh, at least in the text, the instructions on how to do it with a, with a yeasted starter. I'm going to be using for the kneading, you see that I got for Christmas, you see over there that I got a nice uh, dough mixer. Uh, so I'm getting old and uh, well, I get tired and this is going to help me very nicely. But if you want to knead it by hand, I suggest that you check the video description below uh, because there is a link to a video where I made the other Roscon and where I show the technique for, for uh, kneading manually, uh, namely also the slap and fold technique. So my dough has proofed for uh, about five hours and uh, you can see I will divide, I will use a scale for dividing and then after that I will shape each of them, I will do the pre-shape into a bowl. You want to oil the surface where you would like to work. You want to oil your scraper and your hands as well remove the air stretch and fold stretch and fold stretch and fold stretch and fold and now it looks like we will get much further than this with the stretch and folds and now again I'm going to make some tension give some tension to the dowel this is a key a 
key step because with this you just make sure that it won't spread and it won't become flat. Okay, those corners have proved nicely and now we want to do the, the, final, the final shape. Uh, you see that after one hour the the ball is still keeping its shape which means I don't need to do anything else but just give the final shape. I would recommend that after half hour of proofing you check and if your, if your uh, Roscon has gone flat in that case I would recommend that you do the, the pre-shaping again into a ball but the way to do it would be just to turn it upside down just to get, take advantage of this part that would have dried a bit and that would make your life easier. Okay. At this moment, what I've done is, in order to prevent further problems, I just put the directly on the tray what I'm going to bake. I put the a parchment paper, I put my roscon on top, and this parchment paper I've, I have oiled and I have my, my hands oiled as well. Now, I just need to make a, a hole in the center with my two thumbs, and then I would need to start stretching it until it reaches a size of about 27, 28 centimeters uh, diameter. Um, as a matter of a reference, this, this tray is 40 centimeters wide, so yeah, it should be somewhere, something like this, more or less. I'm pretty satisfied with the proportion between the size of the hole and the, and the, and the, the width of the ring. I think it's, it's good. Uh, we don't want also a perfect, uh, perfectly even shape. It's an artisan uh, Roscon what we are doing and it will add to the look of it when it's, it's not perfectly even. For hiding the surprise is the following method. You just grab uh, the, the dough, turn it like this, you can hold it with your other hand that is oiled, then you put your surprise here, somewhere around here, and then you simply stretch a bit the dough and you and you close it and like this, and then you can seal it here in the lower part with your hands. Roscones have been proofing for uh, four hours, and then they were nicely undeveloped. And then I put them into the I put them into the fridge. I have refrigerated them overnight, and then uh, I just took them out one hour ago and put them not at room temperature, but I I just had my my oven nice and warm at about forty degrees, and now they are nice. They were a bit kind of hard in the outside, so I sprayed with a bit of water and put a pot of water inside the, the oven and now they are just perfect to be to be baked. So the first thing is to is to to decorate them. I'm just going to use uh, my egg wash first and then I will put uh, some some uh, candied cherries, some of my homemade candied oranges. You can see you can check my video how to make them and then uh, you have the, I have uh, sliced uh, almonds and some decorating sugar.
is straight from the oven. Now, very important is to wait until it cools down before opening it. I know it's a big temptation, but I, I recommend it because otherwise the crumb can still be a bit moist and, and then it would destroy the crumb if you, if you open it so early. So here you can see the crumb, how soft it is. It's like super soft and this is because it has a higher proportion of butter as compared to, to the other Roscon I showed. This is my traditional, the one I normally do and, and I need to tell you that it is like, it's really delicious and it's, uh, it's amazing the taste and, and the texture.